Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in. So overall, yes, the market is, you know, crashing. We did see Bitcoin down about 18 and a half, uh, you know, percent. Ethereum almost down 30 percent. We seen XRP down, you know, almost 19 percent on the seven day span. We did see the, you know, global crypto market cap break down below one trillion dollars uh, for a little bit of time. I want you guys to understand that we are seeing some major moves happening within this market around, you know, all coins. Specifically on the seven day span, you guys do see a lot of them down like over 40 percent. It is rough. And uh, I want you guys to understand that right now, you know, I know times like these are extremely, you know, fearful. They're, you know, concerning. You guys might be a little bit concerned if this is, you know, your first time seeing this. Maybe you weren't here during March of 2020. Maybe you weren't during, you know, here during the uh, summer of 2021. Um, but I want you guys to understand that. You know, you just got to have strength to just kind of, you know, get through this. It is rough. Um, I know that, you know, times like these could seem almost hopeless uh, because of the market sentiment and, you know, what is happening around emotions. But I want you guys to understand that, you know, this is nothing that we haven't seen before. You know, things like this do happen. But I want to talk to you guys about a few things. So first off, you know, we do see here uh, this tweet is actually pretty, you know, clear to me what we are seeing on Twitter right now. Uh, we all got the low crypto prices. We want it. But now they're, you know, that they're here. No one wants to buy anymore because they want lower. Everybody's screaming lower. We're seeing, you know, we're going to see that meeting this week with, you know, Jerome Powell and things like that are going to, you know, really spark a massive debate around the market. And it's, you know, going to throw us down the stairs, if you will, even more. Um, but I don't believe that that is exactly what we will see. I think that we are, you know, ranging here. And I'm actually going to be talking to you guys a little bit about Bitcoin and where we basically are currently. So let's actually move on and let's talk about a few things. So we do see here just in $500 million has been liquidated from the crypto market in the past 24 hours. Again, a lot of people are saying like, why does this feel like the end of the world? Been there, done that. It will go away. Happens every major market cycle. Just keep your head down, working hard. This shall to pass. And yes, you know, when we talk about things happening around this, you know, the sentiment around this market is basically this, like everything is over, everything's done, crypto's going to zero, you know, it's, it's like the roughest time in this market. Um, but honestly, we're not near March of 2020, you know, in terms of like max pain. We're not even close to that level, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to be talking about the percentages here in a second. But I also want to share with you guys the Confluence floor model. Now, you guys probably remember me saying 27.7K. And yes, that was the older, uh, you know, com Confluence floor model. There was actually a glitch on Glassnode that kind of messed with the overall integrity of those targets. The actual floor model is 24.3K, almost 24.4K. Um, but we do see here um, Confluence floor model target. Uh, price right now at the time that this was posted was 26.7k uh, floor model 24.3k almost 24.4k and shout out to plan c for this looks like the coming days bitcoin will be testing the floor model and i do believe that we will see that and i want you guys to understand that when we have seen the test of the floor model it has always been a signal to buy marta 2020 we go back to even you know the 2018 2019 bear market Every single time that we have touched that floor model, it has been the perfect time to basically, you know, average in and buy. And I'm telling you guys right now, we're basically going to be seeing that yet again. We just recently seen, you know, the test of Bitcoin down to roughly, you know, 24.9K. And I want you guys to understand that I will fully admit that I was wrong. I was actually expecting this to rally before having this massive drop down. And I actually do expect this to go a little bit lower. We can go lower than the Confluence floor model. Again, remember that these Confluence floor model, you know, prices are the daily candle closes. These are the daily candle closes that we actually have to close above in order to have this kind of, you know, stay within the, the range of the Confluence floor model. Now, I will say that's why I'm actually expecting wicks down uh, below it. And the reason why I have this 22.8K zone labeled on the chart is basically because this is our demand range support zone going back to roughly like December of 2020. 
And yes, I do have, you know, a few targets down here at like 19.9K. And even I have the 236 down here on the macro fib uh, range going back as far as like the March of 2020 crash. Um, if we look at this, yeah, it could come down, you know, slightly a little bit lower. It all depends on really kind of where we range here. Um, but in my opinion, you know, again, I'm averaging in because I do believe that we will see that bottoming structure, you know, put in place on Bitcoin uh, here soon. And also just remember that XRP can definitely come down lower. I have a few targets set here. So first off, uh, macro fib level, 236, roughly at 24 cents, it's 23.9 um, in terms of the cent range. Um, but I also do have this, you know, level down here. This is actually testing the uh, December 2020 and January 2021 demand range at almost 22 and a half cents. And I also have this target here at roughly 27 and almost a half cents. Now, I'm not really kind of dead set on this holding that much. I just don't believe that there is a large amount of support here. So we'll most likely see this fib level or, you know, the bottom structure here at 22 and a half cents being tested, which from the current range on XRP is roughly a 30% drop or, you know, almost 26%, which that could definitely be, you know, exactly what we see if we do see a test of that 22, you know, cent or a 22 point, like roughly 8K zone on Bitcoin, which would be 10%. And at the current Bitcoin dominance level, you know, altcoins will get decimated during that time. Now, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the, you know, futures here. So, um, this is actually refreshed. So let me just make sure that it's refreshed fully. Uh, basically, negative 65 points on the S&P 500. You know, again, when we look at this, it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a bearish Monday. So I just want you guys to understand to be, you know, warned ahead of time that things could get a little bit worse. So, you know, yeah, I am averaging into some positions. I've told you guys that I have been. Um, but, you know, again, always have fiat on the sides for dips like this. So, you know, just to kind of warn you guys ahead of time, you know, pay attention to also adoption happening around crypto. So first off, we do see MasterCard CEO, you know, we want to make buying and selling crypto as easy as possible. This was followed up by more adoption around American Express. They will officially launch a crypto rewards card with Abra Global. Uh, this was quickly followed up by PayPal CEO. Crypto will redefine and be a major part of the financial you know, system says that regulation will be key for broader adoption of crypto. I completely agree. And then, of course, we did see Fidelity CEO. I see crypto winner as an opportunity to double down and go extra hard into crypto. We did see Fidelity basically reinvest into crypto and kind of double down on crypto in general. Now, this was all followed up with massive news from JP Morgan. They want to bring trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to DeFi, the bank's recent tokenization of money market funds with BlackRock dovetails with an institutional DeFi project led by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Now, I want you guys to understand that when we talk about adoption happening around crypto, DeFi is the category to definitely watch for. We do see over time we think tokenizing U.S. treasuries or money market fund shares for an example, means these could all potentially be utilized as collateral in DeFi pools. The overall goal is to bring these trillions of dollars of assets into DeFi so that we could use these new mechanisms for trading, borrowing, and lending, but with the scale of institutional assets. Now, again, this is why I say, like, listen, you zoom out on the chart. First off, look at the March of 2020 crash, you know, even compared to where we are right now. This is the March of 2020 crash. Compared to where we are now, if you bought even like around the bottoming range, we'll say like, you know, roughly here, you know, you're still in profit over 130%. And I'm not saying that that's incredible or anything like that. I'm just saying like, if you go off of even, you know, the bottoming structure and go to the recent high that we made back in April of 2021, you know, you made over a 1300% gain on your investment. So again, these major buy opportunities are huge in this market, especially even if you look at like Bitcoin, right? You look at Bitcoin going back to like March of 2020, you know, we came down to like roughly $3,800 and we ran all the way to almost, you know, $70,000. Well, it was like basically 68.9K. And I know on some exchanges, it's actually a little bit higher. But again, you know, the gains here are massive when we have these huge capitulation events. And I'm not saying that we're at our bottom. I'm just saying we could be bottoming out a little bit 
on Bitcoin before we continue higher, similar to what I actually did outline here. Um, but I do believe that we're actually seeing this part here where we have this massive sell off event before having that relief rally. And these things do take time. Um, we'll most likely trade within this range for a little bit of time, similar to what we did see back in the summer of 2021, uh, with July into August being the time to really kind of watch for a major reversal. If it does happen, I say if because, you know, we could it's never guaranteed that things like this would happen. But also, I want you guys to understand that Europe is sig signaling that they are ready we do see our Justin European Union aims to have common key crypto legislation ready this month. Again, talking about adoption of crypto and even, you know, again, regulations. We're basically seeing them being ushered in here through some major giants. Things are rapidly shifting around crypto. While everyone is being, you know, fearful and being shaken out, in my opinion, I think that these mass shakeouts happen directly at a pivotal moment in time for crypto, similar to even March of 2020. Remember, around this time, when we did see these major crashing points, we've seen DeFi truly take the wheel. And also around this time, we did see a lot of assets also kind of having some major moves, and it was the perfect time to buy crypto. Again, it's actually pretty comical when we look at the current structure of the market compared to what we actually did see during, you know, even 2019 and into 2020. And I do think that a lot of people are really kind of fearful to buy right now simply because they do think that a recession is going to happen. They think that we're basically going, you know, down much, much lower. Um, but in my opinion, I think that it is a lot of noise. Uh, at the current moment in time. I do think that, yes, we will see a recession, but I think that we have some more time and one last major move left in the market before we actually do see that. And of course, you guys don't need to follow everything that I do. Again, I'm not giving you guys financial advice here. I'm just outlining my plan that I'm actually, you know, trading with in. So again, pay attention to what we are seeing basically um, behind the scenes, behind all the noise, which is mass adoption of crypto and Europe is ready. We actually also did see Ripple expanding further to the UK and Europe as module uh, NAB's new deal. Now, again, remember that when we talk about Europe and even the UK, they have been really kind of streamlining you know, crypto and really adopting crypto massively. And they really want to usher in regulatory clarity around crypto to actually adopt it fully and utilize it even more for even higher grade use cases. But we do see RippleNet continues to expand. We do see down here, RippleNet continues to expand. Fast, seamless, cost-effective payments from Brazil to UK and Europe, powered by Ripple and Modular. Now, this is huge. Again, remember that you know Europe just signaled that they are ready. This also comes at a pivotal moment in time um, from the IMF, basically saying, hey, listen, you know, when designing CBDCs, IMF urges that they should consider environment when doing so. They said that also central banks should steer clear of proof of work protocols, the international institution says. This is basically telling us that, listen, they're not going to be adopting Bitcoin or Ethereum. We do see, you know, what are we seeing now is a broader realization that if CBDCs is going to be an infrastructure, uh, it has to be better than the one that we have. CEO of CBDC infrastructure provider Mtech. This is actually from Carmel Cadet, CEO of CBDC infrastructure at Mtech, uh, which I've talked about within Hedera. In addition to processing payments faster and easier traceability and trust, CBDC has to be energy efficient. We also do see down here, major cloud service providers are shifting towards renewable sources of energy, such as geothermal and hydropower, as well as towards locations with colder climates to reduce the carbon footprint in generating power. Adding the environmental footprint as a selection criterion of a cloud partner can benefit not only the CBDC project, but also any future digitization project of a central bank. Remember, this is key to pay attention to. And I've also told you guys many, many times in the past that yes, you know, in terms of, you know, sustainability and things like that happening around the environment, it is going to be a huge selling point. And here we have it basically becoming a major issue around CBDCs. This is why I, I also believe that Ripple is going to continue to su succeed. But also, you know, we see the SEC lawsuit moving forward. I do believe that we are at, you know, a very crucial moment for XRP. 
I'm still holding strong. I have not sold a single XRP because we are continuously seeing adoption and also the the vision continuing to really unfold before our eyes. Again, remember that you know Ripple just posted about CBDCs yet again for CBDCs to better knit you know countries and regions together through cross border payments. Interoperability is key. A big challenge to achieving this is a unified approach to anti money laundering uh, standards. And remember. I've told you guys that even in regards to, you know, Ripple and Quant, they basically solved interoperability. And I know that, you know, a few people will mention IP, um, the Interledger Protocol, IOP, if you will. Um, but in my opinion, I don't believe that the Interledger Protocol is going to be the source for this. The reason why, you know, I don't believe that the Interledger Protocol is going to work is because every single financial institution and bank would have to be signed up for that. And it is, you know, a little bit of hopium to understand that, like, listen, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say Ripple with XRP is going to be the only choice for CBDCs. No, the central bank digital currencies will be built out on ledgers, multiple ledgers. That's why when we look at QNT, QNT will basically be the best choice here for interoperability. This is also why I've said that Ripple and QNT are building the infrastructure for CBDCs. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, after you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.